Yeah, this is my favorite figure over here simply because she resembles Hideo Kojima so much. This meme right here. Hello and welcome back to this week's figure news fix. I'm Steven from Exco Gaining Studio. So the figures going on pre-order this week, 21st to 26th of November 2022. I think this is even way lesser than last week. Fortunately, because I am very tired, very exhausted, because I've just spent six hours earlier today covering three figure events. Yes, Ami Ami Hobby Camp, Mega Hobby Expo, and One Hobby Gallery by Good Smile. Three figure events. It is like Wonder Festival, just a different name. So I know you guys are kind of distracted right now. All of your focus are on the new stuff that has just been announced. I will do a video. A separate one on the highlights from these events there are like over 600 new figures it is impossible to cover everything so there will be a highlight video my next one but for now bear with me we will be going through this week's new figures that have just went on pre-order on the 26th of november on ami ami there are no new skill figures male or female there's only one godzilla of some kind so we move on to the 25th immediately so there are a couple of very nice figures over here Actually, three of them that I would like to highlight. So the first one would be this one, Vertex Originals Dark Elf Village, Second Villager, Raira Antenna Shop Limited Edition, 1x6 scale for almost 30,000 yen. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Vertex, they make excellent skill figures. They make really good figures. Just that, their characters, the figures they choose to make, the characters are often original designs, original characters by artists. So it really boils down to whether you like the character design or not. And they have this one product line where they make all kinds of elf characters and this is just one of them. So if you are interested in this one, you are unsure whether you should proceed, I would say go ahead and pre-order this one. This is a very good purchase. Once again, we have two separate versions over here. The other one is cheaper by 4,000 yen, but you do lose that special grass base over there and an A3 wallpaper. So usually, I tend to avoid collecting merchandises. I mean, I don't collect this kind of things. Maybe it is your kind of thing. So you can justify paying another 4,000 yen. But at the same time, this time around, I would go for the more expensive one just because I get a nicer base for it. Yeah. So we move on to the next figure. This is also a highlight of the week. We have Chenhai Vestibule of Wonders version. This is a 1x6 scale figure from Azalin by Anygift or Anygame. This is a Chinese company, by the way. There are two different versions once again. Separating the two is 1,200 yen. The more expensive one comes with an acrylic stand of some kind. So it really depends whether you want that or not. Personally, I won't bother. So this figure. Yeah, for Azalin fans, you might want to pick this one up. I like this figure a lot. Yes, Anime Logic once again. I mean, look at her chest and her clothes over there. That must be some really strong adhesive, but whatever. So, should you get this one? Well, I have seen a number of any gift figures. Well, you're not going to expect outer quality, but they are good purchasers, right? So, if you like Azalane, you like this character, yeah, maybe you should consider picking this one up. Up next is a male character over here, Identity V, or is that a 5 in Roman characters? No idea. First press limited edition box, Truth and Interference, the Dark Wanderer, Sea Noir figure. Provisional pre-order, which means Chinese brand. Yeah, that is games, Chinese brand, just under 15,000 yen. I have no idea at all what is this thing actually, or what game he originated from, this character came from. 15,000 yen is pretty cheap. So is there a catch? Like maybe the figure is way smaller than expected. Let's check out the details of this figure. Yep, it is small, 18 centimeters. Yeah, this is 1 by one by 12 scale, I think. And 15,000 yen for 1 by, one by 12 scale is pretty expensive. But at the same time, this is a very detailed figure. So if you know something about this character, let me know down in the comments below. But this is a skip. For me. The next one over here, Kano Nada Mesukashi, negotiation version, 1x7 skill figure from Good Smile Arts Shanghai. So you see, Good Smile nowadays they have a China branch. They call it Good Smile Arts Shanghai. Yeah. 
So I would say this is kind of, well, a Chinese company, but at the same time, it is more like a branch of Good Smile. So what do you think about that? By the way, Nada Mesukashi, I mean, are there actually real Japanese people out there over in Japan with a name like this that is so long and so difficult to pronounce? But anyways, this character is from... No, I think this should be an original character, right? Oh, a VR artist, I see. I've never heard of this artist, but this is a very unique character, not my cup of tea. There are a lot of things floating around, levitation effect. So if you like the character, I suppose you can pick one up. I mean, after all, it is being backed by Good Smile. Can't be that bad, right? Should be a very decent figure, but this is a skip for me. Alright, we move on to the next one. This time around, a figure by Kadokawa under the Arcade Call series. From Reincarnated Slime, we have this Milim Nava Wedding Bikini version, 1x7 skill. Alright, so there are four versions when you look at this on Ami Ami. So we have the 23,580 yen one, and another one would be slightly more expensive, 27,800 yen. The difference between the two must be another wall scroll, yep, a B2 wall scroll. So I'm not going to repeat on the wall scroll part, it depends on whether you want it. So should you go for this figure of Milim Nava really depends on you because for me, wedding dress version, this is a bit more to fan service and does not really depict Milim Nava as an actual character. How she is, I would prefer the figure, I mean the character in her original outfit. So this is not really my, not my veggie, I guess. So I'll be skipping this figure. What about you? Let me know down in the comments below. Let's move on to the next figure. The next one is also a Chinese company called Mimeyoi, though they are more well known for their 1x4 skills. This one is a 1x7 though. Green Shirane from Little Armory. 21,700 yen, a fair price for a 1x7 skill. And in general, I am a fan of girls with guns, with big weapons, with cannons, and so on. The photos of this figure in this weekend's event as well. I think it was Ami Ami Hobby Camp, I think. Mimeyoi was displaying this figure. It looked fairly fine to me. But I would say this isn't really my type of figure. I wouldn't mind having it, but... Yeah, not, not really a priority for me. The next figure is by Amakoni, very reputable company. Aerial 1x7 skill from this anime called So I'm Spider, So What? Yeah, I remember this one, but I did not watch it. So if you are a fan of this character, then maybe go for it because Amakuni makes great figures. There is no doubt about that. I buy a lot of their FGO stuff actually. Well, I'm not interested in this figure anyway, so let's move on to the next one. The next one, we have a 1x7 skill Kana China dress version from Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid by Furio, 33,000 yen. Here we go again, every other week, Furio is just putting up figures for pre-order at an absolute horrid price. They are just doing whatever they want at the moment, very erratic pricing over here. I mean, Kana is a very short character. At 1x7, she will be at pop-up rate size, I think. We look at the dimensions. Yup, 17.5 cm, that is pop-up rate territory. Just that, she has a large head as a lolly character. So 33,000 yen for this? No, this is a no from, from me. I mean, Full Wheel is just doing whatever they want nowadays with the pricing just because they want to cash off the fans of the franchise. There were two or three figures from last week by Full Wheel with the same pattern as well. So, I don't really support what Full Wheel is really doing with the figures especially the pricing at the moment. So we have Aosha's Nei, I mean, am I pronouncing it correctly? A 1x7 skill figure from Bastard Heavy Metal Dark Fantasy. A figure by Medicos Entertainment. Now, if you are a fan of this series or this character, definitely pick up this figure because not many figure companies make character from this series over here. Meanwhile, Medicos Entertainment, well, they are kind of hit and miss. Sometimes they make great stuff. Sometimes they have QC issues. But once again, you don't have much choices with this character over here. Pick one up if you like her. That is all I can say about this figure. Not really my type of figure either. Fortunately, I don't have too much things to pre-order. 
The next one is my favorite figure for this week. We are looking at NTW20 Aristocrat Experience Service, a 1x6 scale figure by Pony Canyon. I nearly mispronounced that as NTR, but yeah, this is my favorite figure over here simply because she resembles Hideo Kojima so much. This meme right here, yeah, the pose is so similar and yeah, that rifle, very detailed. I like this a lot and I might buy one after release. I'm not sure if I'm going to pre-order now, but I am very interested in this figure. Yeah. This is something I would definitely pre-order if budget is not a concern. So what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. This is definitely a figure I would pre-order if budget is not a concern. And that is all for the 25th of November. We move on to the 24th of November. There are like a couple of figures over here. The first one, we have Erotics Gear Girl Witch illustration by Alwitch, a 1x6 scale figure based on an artwork and by a company called Gentleman a fairly new company and this is a Chinese company. Yeah, Chinese. 30,000 yen is a lot of money for a brand that is virtually unknown at this point though there are prototypes in this weekend's event, Ami Ami Hobby Camp. Yep. So I guess that you can judge whether to pre-order this one just based on those prototype pictures though prototypes do not necessarily translate into actual products that look the same. For me, in my opinion, the face looks really weird, like the eyes uh, seem to be really narrow and very close to each other. Like, yeah, to me the face just looks a bit weird. So not really my cup of tea over here. So I'm going to skip this one. The second figure for the 24th of November, we have Full Wheels 1x7 scale, Hoji Shoujo Jang Jiao. 38,500 yen. Once again, full wheel and their erotic pricing. I mean, I get it. The Japanese yen is very weak. It has depreciated a lot, but the way full wheel is making up for it, but with their price increases, I don't think Alter is even that aggressive with their price increase. Well, very colorful, very detailed figure indeed. At least, well, this one can justify the price compared to Kana earlier, but 38,000 yen, Pretty steep. This is a skip for me. Yeah. Oh yes, 23rd of November, no figures at all. Let's move on to the 22nd. I just want to get done with this very quickly because I'm tired after covering three separate events on Facebook earlier today. So on this day, there is one figure I like a lot. I would love to have this one right here. RO635 Enforcer of the Law, 1x7 scale figure from Girls Frontline. This is a figure by Fat Company, almost 29,000 yen, very expensive, no discounts over here. And yeah, Fat Company, buying their figure is like gacha. If you are lucky, you get something very nice. If not, you face quality control issues, that is just natural phenomenon at this point, just like climate change. QC issues with Fat Figures, they are so common at this point, yeah. It is like gacha, it's like gambling when you buy the products. The thing with Fat Company figures is that they make figures of characters that are very, very desirable, yeah. And when you look at the product photos, you want them badly. And it is to that extent where you are willing to take the risk, even though you know that you are gambling when you buy one of their figures. This is another one of those cases over here. I'm still keeping a close watch. I might pick her up, but I'm not sure yet at this point. The next one, we have Jizu Mizuhara, 1x7 skill by this company called One Slash. Another company I've never heard of from Rent a Girlfriend. Alright. Well, there are lots of figures of this character somehow in the market. So this one is one of the less attractive ones to me, to be honest. Not because the figure looks bad or anything like that, but rather it looks a bit plain. I'm not sure if that is the right word. Yeah. So what do you think? Not a bad purchase, except that 25,000 yen is very steep, very expensive for a 1x7 skill. Yeah. Especially one that is so plain. So this wouldn't be high in my priority, to be honest. I would look around other figures of Jizu Mizuhara at this point. The third figure for the 22nd is a very random one. King of Glory Landshark Hunting Blade version, 1x10 scale by Mietos. 
Mietos is a very well-known Chinese figure company at this point and their figures are very well made. Very nice, good smile level, yep. And occasionally, they also partner with good smile with some figures. So, if you know what this thing is and you are interested in getting this figure, well, 4,000 yen is very cheap. I mean, if you think 1 by 10 skill is very small, wait until you scroll down at the bottom, this figure is 21 centimeters tall which is more like 1 by 8 skill but this is a 1 by 10 maybe because this guy is a giant I guess this is a 7 or 8 feet tall guy maybe I have no idea who this character is but 21 centimeter tall figure for 4000 yen this is mind boggling cheap and lastly for the 21st of November I mean, I mean, somehow they bumped up two figures from last week to put it on pre-order on this day on the front page once again. We are not going to cover that again. But there are two others from Kotobukiya. The first one over here, Art FXJ Pokemon series, Brandon with Draco, one by eight skill, almost eleven thousand yen. Yeah, Kotobukiya is always offering great value to figure collectors. So if you are a fan of Pokemon of this character, yep, go ahead and pick this one up. The second one, same story. Art FXJ, Pokemon series May with Mud Keep. 1 by 8 skill, 11,000 yen as well. Yeah, if you love Pokemon, of course, this is a very good purchase, period. And that concludes this week's new figures that have gone on pre order. That is what the figure news fix is about. There will be a separate video for today's three events. Yep, today we had one hobby gallery, we had Mega Hobby Expo, and Ami Ami Hobby Camp. Autumn edition. So three events combined, there are over 600 new figures or updated figures as big as Wonder Festival. Of course, I'm going to make a video on that, but it is more to highlight. Yeah, I'm going to highlight several exciting figures. I'm not going to cover 600 figures one by one. That is impossible, humanly impossible, right? And if you are interested in that, please do subscribe to this channel. I would really appreciate it. We'll go through that in our next video. Hopefully, it won't be too long. Yeah. So, thank you very much for watching. And once again, see you soon. Goodbye.